Recently, you published a very interesting study about the corpus callosum microstructure and the relationship with the biomanual performance. Perhaps many listeners are wondering what the corpus callosum has to do with this bimodal performance, or perhaps the explanation is that the, this corpus callosum connects both hemispheres. Um, so you have studied this uh, corpus callosum. So what could you tell us about its role in the bimodal performance? Uh, I, I know that there are different zones of connection of the corpus callosum with the premotor or prefrontal region that may uh, explain the, uh, the reason why several patients has problems with the self-initiated uh, bimodal movements and so on. Yeah, yeah, this is a, uh, it's a very interesting uh, study, again, preliminary in nature um, mm -hmm. and correlational, um, of course, as is with so many imaging studies. Uh, but the idea here, is we, we know that um, there is transcolossal interaction. That is the basis for a lot of the movements we generate. Even when, even unimanual movements, the other cortex needs to be inhibited uh, before the unimanual movements can be done. So in bilateral movements, the communication between the hemispheres is very fascinating. Um, it has so many parts to it, I'm sure. But the, I, the premise of this study was, um, we wanted to understand how the different parts of the closum um, if they had any relationship with bimanual performance. And it's a correlational study. So we're not talking a lot about physiological mechanisms by which they're doing this. But we're saying that if after a stroke, there is um, there's a, some impairment in the communication between hemispheres, we should observe that in, in function in some way. Um, and a lot of the studies have done that, but have focused on unimanual behaviors, we focused on bimanual behaviors. Uh, and the other thing that a lot of studies have done is focused on the motor cortex, because the motor cortex is where a lot of the investigations tend to be with respect to stroke. But we um, hypothesize that we know other areas, supplementary motor area and premotor areas are particularly involved in planning these types of movements. Mm -hmm. So when the hemispheres are talking about also, when, when you're preparing for biannual actions, uh, there is a lot of motor planning that goes on before that, and the plans need to be shared for each of the limbs. And that we, we thought that the um, anterior regions of the callosum, such as the portions that connect the prefrontal and premotor cortices and, and uh, supplementary motor cortex, will that, that the structure and integrity of those fibers there in the callosum may tell us something about um, bimanual performance. And we used a crude measure of performance, really. We used movement time um, for people who self-initiated this use. See, they decided to use both hands and the folks who actually, the patients who decided to use both hands, we looked at movement times and them, how long did they take to do that? And one of the um, things, one of the hypotheses, one points that we discussed in the discussion there was that perhaps what we're seeing people's, the people who showed slower performance may have been the people who've had difficulty communicating the plan quickly enough, use it, you know, via those anterior fibers of the callosum. Um, and there is a, uh, there is a well-known, well, a really old, but well-known study uh, that shows that those fibers of the anterior callosum are responsible for sharing what they call efference copies, a direct route for efference copies or copies of the command being sent to the other side. Um, that in itself is uh, a, good, uh, a good basis for saying that it's possible that these sharing of plans um, through efference copies, if they're not fast enough or effective enough, that you'd start seeing delays uh, behaviorally. That is really a stretch there, but um, that, that was the idea behind that analysis. And we did find uh, not only the motor cortex, cortex the colossal, colossal fibers that connected the motor cortex to be, to be correlated with behavior, but also prefrontal and premotor cortices, um, which we thought was valuable um, to share with the community.